If you're new to Rails, you may have heard of people talking about the Hotwire or Stimulus. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can create a basic Stimulus controller. I'm gonna run you through the controller itself as well as how it connects and the mental model behind it. So let's jump in. All right, so first things first, we need to make sure we have set up Rails. So go to Rails, Ruby on Rails.org, getting started, set that all up. Once we've got that running, we wanna make sure we're using at least version 18 of Node, which I am right there. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new Rails app. So we're gonna go Rails new, and then we're gonna call this Rails Stimulus Demo, and we're gonna use CSS, and we're gonna use Tailwind for that. And we're going to use JavaScript, we're gonna use ES Build. All right, so you can, Use all that good stuff. We're gonna hit enter, let it do its thing, install all the packages and all the things. All right, now once that's done, we're gonna go CD uh, Rails Stimulus Demo, jump into that. And then we're gonna run bin dev. Firstly, I'm gonna actually, I'm just open my cursor here, pop that open and then I'm gonna run bin dev. And we run that so it starts off to the tailwind processor, it starts off the JavaScript and then it also starts Rails server. But we can hit there, now we got a little Rails app running. All right, so we can see that's all good. So we are running Rails, excellent. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to set up our home controller. To set up our home controller, we're gonna go into app. Let's bump this up a bit so everyone can see. Pull that over here. So we're gonna go controllers, we're gonna create in here, we're gonna go home underscore controller.rb. And then we're just gonna set up class home controller extends application controller. We're gonna set up an index route here, but what we're gonna do instead, we don't actually need anything else out of this. We're not fetching any records. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the view. So we're gonna go into here, we're gonna close this off, we're gonna go into views, and then we're just gonna create in here, we're gonna create a new folder. So we're gonna go home slash index.html.erb, okay? Now in here, I'm just gonna say hello world, all right, and then finally, we're gonna go down into our config. We're gonna go into initializers, sorry, no, config, and then routes. And then here where we have this root, we're gonna uncomment that, and we're gonna say this is gonna to go to home index. Now what we should be able to do is when we refresh this page, we've got our controller being hit, and then we can actually see our content. All right, so that's the first piece of the puzzle. Next up, we're gonna create our stimulus controller. All right, so I'm just gonna open a new tab here. And then I'm gonna go Rails G Stimulus. And we're gonna call this one, um, we're gonna call this external platform ID. Okay, so it's gonna be a stimulus controller for an external platform ID. We're gonna use, paste YouTube URLs in here, it's gonna grab the ID out of it, okay? So we run that and you can see two things happen. We created a new file here in JavaScript controllers and that's our stimulus controller. And then we've also updated our manifest. All right, so if we jump in here, have a look at JavaScript controllers, you'll see we've got this external platform ID controller. And then this is the manifest here, right? So whenever this gets run, you can see it here, it's a little comment. It's like, don't do this, auto generate It's adding in and registering our controller here. This is very important. Always make sure that it's there. If it's not there, you're gonna have problems. It's a good place to debug. So we're gonna close this guy off. And here's our controller now. So you can see it connects to data controller. So wherever we use data controller, external platform ID, stimulus will connect to that element, okay? So what we want need to do is we need to go into our um, controller now, this guy not our controller, sorry, our view. And we wanna add in a new input and connect it to that, okay? So we're gonna go input here, and then we're gonna say data controller is external platform ID. That's uh, a type text. And we're gonna give it some class here just to make it look a bit nicer. So we're gonna go border, border, gray 300, rounded medium, and padding two with a margin of four. All right, let's see if we have anything here. There we go, got a little input box we can type in, which is excellent. And now you can also see that we've connected this to this controller. So what we're gonna do here, the, what I like to do for sanity checking is just go console log this dot element, all right? And then we can see if our element's connected. So we refresh, whoopsie, our browser's not exported. No, nah, sorry, there we go. You can see here that we can, we're getting our input, which has been console log, and when we hover it, you can actually see it in the DOM. 
okay? And that's a good way to check that your controller is actually connected to your element. So just so you know, the, if you've never used stimulus before, this is the key piece here, this data controller piece of logic or the tag here. This is telling stimulus to connect to this element and this L, whatever the, this data attribute is attached to is the, or it gets assigned to this element, okay? Very key. Um, but very important to double check. You can also, because there's an intro, you can add multi here. So if you had another um, controller, you just hit a space between and you can add the other one. So you can actually string multiple controllers. So you could have like a validation one and then one that happens when you hit a button that doesn't alert or something. So you can, you can actually string those together. So it's good to know. So now we're gonna actually make this thing a bit more useful. We're actually gonna extract the YouTube ID. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna say extract um, YouTube ID um, and we're going to ignore everything that cursor has to say to us but what we're going to do is we're going to grab the value and it's going to come from e dot target and we're going to get passed in this because what we're doing is we're setting up an action here okay and then what we're going to do from there is we're just going to console log this value. I like to just do it the step by step just so that, especially when you're learning, just to make sure that everything actually is working. Okay. So once we've done that, we're now going to add an action here. So controllers are the things that are going to handle basically the events. And then the actions are the things that were going to actually happen when we, you know, click on something or we type. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can see in the docs. But for in, in our case, what we want to do is we just want to say um, on input, we're going to hit external platform ID and we're going to hit extract YouTube. This is the event that's happening. So in stimulus, different types of, um, I guess, elements have default types. So like a button, the default is click. Uh, or a link, sorry, it would be click. Input would be on input, okay? So usually you can just get rid of that and just keep it simple. Now what we should see is on input, so if I pull up our console, you can see as I'm typing, I'm getting my target down here, okay? So we're registering that action and we're doing the work here, okay? So that's all good. Now what we wanna do is we wanna be actually be able to paste in a YouTube ID and we're gonna extract the value. So I've got some code here that I'll just place in because it's not really important to this tutorial. We're more just showing you how stimulus works rather than the actual logic. So I'm just gonna stick that in here. So as you can see, I've got some regex here that basically just figures out if one of these URLs and then it's gonna give us this ID. If we match, we're gonna set the, the value of our input to the match, okay? So now if I refresh this page and I actually get a youtube.com uh, video and grab one of these guys, so we just grab this, this URL. And then if we paste this in here, you can see what it's done. So it's taken this whole URL and it's trimmed this and left us just with this ID. And that's exactly what we want. So that's how you add actions to elements in stimulus. It's just literally a data action. And then you're calling this part here is the ID of the controller, right? So you can see here it's underscore, but this gets converted into kebab case. And I'll show you a little trick that you can do as well, which is nice for debugging. Is if you go identifier, you can see here all the ones we've registered and you can see their IDs. This is really important. So this ID here is what we're mapping to here, okay? So I found it like when I started using Simulus, it's quite a little bit, it's a different way of thinking about JavaScript. If you've come from something like React or something like that where everything flows down. This way we use data attributes a lot. So we use data attributes, so, so for actions, controllers, but then you can also pass data through as values. So you could do just like, um, you know, ID equals something. So then we can access that on the element. So use a lot of data, but also just making sure this like naming convention, right? That's really important. And if you don't know the exact convention, because if you have nested folders, you, you just come in here and you can actually see what's registered. Okay, so very, that's a key little, little tip there for you guys. So what we'll do now is we're gonna refactor this um, to use targets. So targets are a way of encapsulating a controller could have many elements inside. And for instance, if we had like a div 
uh, or container that had an input and a button. You could have the button target and the input target. And then that way you can know where to put things in when you want to, like if you push the button, fill the input target with certain value. But what we're going to do is we're going to create two inputs so that when we paste our URL, we won't cut it, but we'll paste the ID or show the ID in a different target. So let's show you how to do that. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to jump in here to our index and we're going to set up a new div. And then inside here, we're going to just go class. We're going to give it flex gap two padding four. And then we're going to say, we're going to move our controller now, right? This piece to here. All right, so let's just tab this guy in and then close off the div here. So this is going to be our input. And now we've moved this data control up here. We can get rid of it over here. I'm going to keep the action on it over there. And then I'm just going to add a placeholder here to say, paste a um, YouTube URL and then next to it we'll have another input um, and we're going to do the same thing not at the placeholder but this one's just going to have a data and this is this one gets a bit interesting because we want to hook it up to a target we have to write the name of the controller so it'll be data external platform ID target equals and then we're gonna call this id field okay so this piece here it's a bit long it gets a bit long um but you just make sure that this because this is telling us that this controller this is a target and this is the name of the target okay so that's just a little bit can get a little bit hard to understand in the beginning once you get it you get it sweet now what we're going to do is we're going to jump back in here into our controller and we're going to go static targets and we're going to add it here id field all right so now we're registering that here so we have now access to that and you can see that this matches this all right that's key and this matches the controller okay and then we're just saying target here and there's some cool methods we can use with these we can say for instance if we go here we can say console.log and we can say this dot has an ID field target, right? Because then we can actually work out, do we have this target or not? Sometimes it may not have been included in the HTML, you know, depending on how you're rendering it. So now if we just go in here and just, for instance, we can just type, you can just see it says true here. Okay, so we do have that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, if we have a match and we have the field target, there what we want to do is we want to say this dot id field target so not the has just this dot id field target dot value is equal to the match all right so let's grab that url again uh whoops there and then we're going to paste that in there i need to refresh the page paste that in there and now you can see we've got our url and we're using our target as the output here, okay? Now, obviously this whole concept of the app isn't very useful, but it's just showing the concepts and the patterns you need to use in stimulus to achieve these things. So the next thing I'm gonna cover is values. So in, in stimulus, we can use values. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say data external platform ID, and this is gonna be called platform value and we're gonna say this is YouTube. So that we know that when we're using this controller, cause we can reuse this controller. We can say, well, we're gonna do an Instagram one. We're gonna do a different one. And we're gonna use this value to determine what we need to do, okay? Cause we're gonna pass these things differently depending on what they are. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back in here and we're gonna go static values is equal to, it's an object and it's platform and it's a string. So now pay attention. So we've got a value and it's platform. Now in the way that it does it in HTML is the controller name, the name that matches, so platform, and then value. And then this is the, the, prop, the actual value of that value. Gets a little bit confusing there. But now we can access that with this.platform value. So you can go console log this.platform value. Now if we go in here again, and if we just type, you can see we've got YouTube because it's pulling that value 
from here. And this is how you can pass through dynamic variables into the controller. So if you, for instance, had some sort of model and it had some properties and you wanted to pass it to stimulus, this is how you get it to stimu stimulus, right? And it can expect and deal with these values like that. All right, it's quite simple to do. You don't have to look up the value like going this e.target.dataset. You know, you don't have to do that. You can just use the values. So it's just a simple way to do that. So now what are we going to do with that value? We're going to use that to determine what to do. So what we're going to say, if this dot platform value is YouTube, then do this work. So we could like ship this out to a different um, method or something. But for our case now, we're just going to say, if you're YouTube, do this. If you're not YouTube, don't do it. So basically let's grab our URL again. And if we paste it, it's YouTube, it works. But if for instance, our little model had passed through and said, oh no, we're working on Instagram right now. We can also, we could probably update this as well. Maybe we just get rid of this to make it more flexible. Now we paste and you can see nothing happens because it's not matching our YouTube variable. If we refresh that, bang, it works again. Okay, so that's how you use values very simply. Okay, so all in all, stimulus is a little bit different to what you would have used with when you're coming from a library like React, um, which is where I came from. And then to move the stimulus like mentality of, and way of doing things is, is a bit different, but it, it is actually quite simple once you get to um, get to know it. I like this connect method because it allows you to do things once. You don't have to do weird use effects and stuff. You can just use connect and then you know that happens. And then there's also the alternate disconnect. So it's very good for things like where you register um, a library and then you want to destroy it when you're finished. So I like that about it. I like that kind of style. It also gives you a good chance to work with JavaScript straight up. So there's no like weird things about the frame because really just a little wrapper of JavaScript that has the connect and the disconnect. And like you don't have to use a lot of these things. You can find them um, if you want to. These are just kind of convenience methods. So like they're not that important. I guess you don't have to use them. It's just, yeah, convenient. And one thing I would encourage you to do is have a look at the docs. So in the reference section, it talks through all the things that it can do, right? So like how you identify, how, and, this, and the scope. So controllers and only work with inside of things um, of their own. Like, so if you have a controller, it'll only have access to these things. So it doesn't leak across. Lifecycle callbacks. So you have initialized, you can know when something's connected, when it's disconnected. You have all your actions that are available. So it shows you, so I was saying, every element has a default event. So anchors and buttons have click, details toggle, inputs, inputs, submit buttons have clicks, select has changed, text areas are input. So you can see they kind of default those things. You can see how to do, you can do key down stuff, which is really cool. And it's got all the, the key combos here. And then your targets, which we just covered, different outlets if you needed two things that aren't nested. So if you wanted to spit across, you can use outlets, values, um, and CSS classes, you can toggle them and stuff here, which I don't really use that. I haven't used this in um, when I'm using Tailwind, I haven't found a need for that. And then also finally, you got this um, TypeScript. So it's all typed up as well if you wanna use TypeScript inside. But it's very simple and I, I recommend giving it a go if you just wanna try and build pure Rails apps. Uh, without adding a front-end library, you, you'll actually get quite far um, without ever needing to really dig too deep. Some things I'll definitely say it can be hard to do if you, you're trying to manipulate the DOM, like the React, the way that it flows down and it's all uh, this, like a derivative of the state or a function of props, which is really, you know, makes things simple. But sometimes it's overkill. Sometimes you don't need that much JavaScript and stimulus is a good alternative. And if you watch some of the other videos using stimulus inside of view components, that I think it really shines like that. It makes it easier to work with these kind of controller names and stuff. There's a lot of helpers there, but um, give that video a look as uh, well. But other than that, Catch you on the next one.